Before we get into everything else, let's go talk about some of these quarterfinal matchups. Had some really great games. And I think a big piece, too, is now going into the semifinal round, we're going to have instant replay available. I know the Harding GV game, uh, I've heard a lot of complaints about some pivotal points in the game where people thought one call should have gone one way or the other. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of them. I don't really have an opinion on it. But I know instant replay does get introduced in the semifinal round of the playoffs. So that's going to be big this week. But we can talk first about Kutztown at Slippery Rock. We talked a lot about this on Saturday uh, for our game day show. And I think the biggest thing that we had mentioned was like, yeah, it's obviously really difficult to beat a team twice. Kutztown did that. They did it in a pretty uh, solid fashion as well. And I talked about it a lot on the show. Like you have a dominant run game and you have a really stingy defense. That's what travels in these kind of situations. Kutztown certainly showed that. And we'll take a look at kind of just some of these clips from the game itself, it wasn't really the Kutztown offense getting a ton going. I don't think that was really the secret for them. But what they did is they were very efficient. Slippery Rock outgained them by almost 300 yards on the day. And when you look at some of these clips, Kutztown defense obviously stepping up. But I'm sure we'll see the interception here soon. The pick six was probably one of the biggest plays of the day. It came a little bit later. But yeah, when you look at this game... Like I said, Kutztown was a lot more efficient. And the, the Slippery Rock, excuse me, The Rock, I always blank. I think they're like, they have like a lion mascot, but it's The Rock. Uh, they couldn't get it done in the red zone. And they had a lot of turnovers when it came here. That's one right there. And this is the play that I'm talking about. Imagine that you go all the way down the field, you drive, and then it's picked off, taken the other way, all the way down the field. That's a 14-point swing. Slippery Rock could have gone in to score right there, even things up. But now Kutztown's ahead by 14 points at this moment in the game on the road to a Kutztown team that knows they probably should have been hosting this round anyways. Man, things were definitely going the way of the Golden Bears. They finished 28-16 at the Rock. They led it going into halftime 21-14 to and then had a nice uh, fourth quarter and uh, finished off Slippery Rock and... I've been very high on the Slippery Rock team all, all year long, especially when you talk about Braden Long under center. He was 33 for 43, 322 yards. We did not have a passing touchdown, only that interception that we saw there in the clip. So really uh, just another solid win from Kustown. Uh, that was Antoine Lloyd with the, it says 100-yard interception return. It was over 100 yards, probably 102, 103-yard pick six for him. That had to be the play of the game. Offensively for Kutztown, there wasn't a whole lot going on. Daryl Davis McNeil was actually, his impact was definitely minimized. He finished 35 yards, which is really uncharacteristic for him. But Judd Novak had a great day under center. Two touchdowns, 11 for 16, super efficient through the air, but more importantly, he took care of the ball. No giveaways through the air for the Golden Bears, and now they get the chance to go to travel to Golden Colorado to play Mines. It's a buzzsaw, man, but we saw Central Washington hang with them for a half, and especially when you talk about this Kutztown defense, anything can happen, anything's on the table. Would not be the first time that Kutztown has uh, been counted out by, I think, a lot of people on the national stage. So look for that to be pretty, uh, pretty exciting one. Another thing they did very well in this contest is limit the impact of Kyle Sheets, another guy we've talked a lot about. He finishes with three catches for 28 yards, and this is a guy that's one of the best receivers in Division II football. When you can limit him to have that kind of day, uh, and then you limit their ground game as well. He didn't have a rusher really over 60 yards. So Kutztown did a great job of limiting, limiting the individual performances, which on an offense like Slippery Rock, where across the board, anyone can kind of have that breakout game. That is very impressive. So that's kind of the, the cliff notes on that one. Like I said, it's going to be exciting going into Colorado Mines. We can move over and talk about that one right now. And, and for this one, Mines versus Central Washington, Halftime, things were tied up at 14. I remember seeing the tweet, and I'm like, holy shit. Like, this this Washington team's really going to, they're going to hang around, they're stick around in there and do it. Unfortunately, that defense, unfortunately for Washington, Central Washington, that defense remind stepped up. They did not score in the second half. John Matoka does eventually wake up, and even on a, I think, a quote-unquote off day for Matoka because he was not just killing it through the air, 16 for 25, 225 yards. He did not have a passing touchdown, did have an interception, which was huge, but he was getting it done on the ground, I think, a lot more. He ends up with 83 yards on the ground. Noah Roper had a great day for them, especially when it comes to the red zone. He's a pretty powerful back, and he's done a lot of great things. Landon Walker, the third piece of that rushing attack for them. And, again, I think if 
you know, for me, it's kind of encouraging if you're a Mines fan to see a game like this because I think they won in a little bit of an unconventional way than what we're used to. This wasn't a, an absolute shootout or a boat race of an offensive game for Colorado Mines, but they found a way to win. And like I've talked about a lot before, I think this team has grown a lot from now to, or to a year ago to uh, today to now. I think there's been a lot of growth from the squad. And I think that really shows they can win the game in a lot of different ways. That front seven for them that I've talked about at nauseum, they shut down the rushing attack from Central Washington. Uh, their leading rusher on the day was the quarterback. He had 12 yards rushing. That's big time. Big time plays from Colorado. They will host another game. They'll have Kutztown coming into town. But probably the game that I'm most excited to talk about here, Harding hosting Grand Valley in what was, I mean, just an absolute slugfest. I think it lived up to all the expectations from myself and others this game was absurd, and I think the final score reflects that. 7-6, to six. Harding takes this one. We can take a look at uh, some of the plays here, and oh my gosh. So Peterson was in to start the game. Harding wasted no time defensively. You see the sack there. Grand Valley's offense has been struggling the last couple of weeks. Harding certainly taking advantage of that. Another time, getting back, putting pressure on the quarterback. Peterson would leave the game with an arm injury, and now you're going to see Avery Moore or under center they like to run him between the tackles not today the bison that front five front six however many they were bringing they were getting pressure they were doing it very often you're gonna see it again here the strip on the backside. he picks it back up recovers but man harding was just non-stop now grand valley had an early touchdown this play was the difference maker a punt on fourth and 12 oh my gosh it's a fake the end around great play by number seven using the sideline gets the tackle that felt like a very pivotal point for this Grand Valley team that was, you know, running out a little bit of steam. This is in the third quarter. It's only six to nothing. Now, Harding goes, drives all the way down the field at a nine-minute drive. They close it off here with a little bit of the uh, brotherly shove, if you will. And then the extra point to put them ahead. And that's all they wrote. Three minutes and 50 seconds left, and Grand Valley would attempt to go back down and score. There's Avery Moore doing his best. He gets tripped up in the backfield for a major loss. Uh, Thole, the third string quarterback, would come into the game, but he actually looked like he threw it away. We don't have the actual clip here. He looked like he threw it away almost on, on fourth down and two, and it was a very head-scratching ending over there in Searcy, Arkansas. Look at the boys and how pumped up they are. Good for Harding. Good for the Bison. Just another quality win for them. You talk about beating probably the best offense in Division Two, arguably, in Central uh, Missouri. And then you go and beat one of the best defenses in Division Two in Grand Valley State. Their resume is absolutely flawless. This Harding Bison team has been fun to watch. I got to tune in to the end of that game. We were actually uh, driving back from the lacrosse uh, North Central game. I got to tune in to the end of this one. This Harding team, man. They are legit. We knew the GVSU defense was going to show up. The defensive line, the linebacker core, the defensive secondary, they have been playing at an incredible clip. We didn't know if the offense was going to finally pick up their game, put some points on the board. A big part of that, too. Kudos to Harding, man. That defense from Harding, really, uh, especially in the red zone. They really shored up. Ben, don't break. This felt like they were fighting for every single yard. So that's a big-time win for Harding. Looking at some of the stats from this one, and I know we talked – earlier with Jalen about it, but I think, you know, just this Harding that I think the term comeback was thrown around a little bit. And I heard the guys on D2Football.com talk about this in their show. I certainly don't think it was a comeback. They were down by one score, but the fact that Harding probably loves that situation where they can go down and score one, score one touchdown and, and be in a position to win the game is, is obviously huge. Now, after Peterson went out of the game, the offense through the air for Grand Valley State was just out the window. Avery Moore finishes the 26 yards passing, three for six, and then Alex Stoll and Trace Hergerch. Eh, that that would have been the punter action that little on that little piece, but they uh, only had a couple yards passing as well. And for Harding, not exactly the most crazy offensive performance. That drive they put together late was really the only time they were able to to piece together a very long drive against that Grand Valley State defense, but. Great teams find a way when it matters. Harding did just that. They will host the semifinal matchup against Lenore Ryan. Very exciting stuff for Harding. We talk about that Lenore Ryan squad a little bit, and I think people were very high on this Blazers squad. 
myself included. What I also know is that Lenore Ryan is a very multi-dimensional offense. You heard me talk about it on Saturday, and that showed up. Not great weather over there in Titletown, Georgia, and Lenore's defense potentially with the best performance of the year. Also, the rushing attack from the Bears that came up big time in this one. They roll 35-7. to Lenore Ryan beats the brakes off the Blazers from Valdosta State. And Dwayne McGee, probably the MVP in this one. He finishes, where is it at here? 22 carries, 102 yards, two touchdowns. But I, I, he had another great performance from Lenore Ryan in uh, Turner Knox, 15 carries for 145 and two touchdowns. So the ground game for Valdosta State was just all over the place. Like I said, their defense, though, holding Sammy Edwards, who we've seen had video game numbers almost every week, holding him uh, 14 for 35. That's a great number to hold him to. Two interceptions, takeaways through the air for that Lenore Ryan defense. Sean White through the air had a very quiet day. And again, this goes back to the weather. It was super foggy, super rainy. It was just like straight football weather, ground and pound weather. Lenore Ryan, very much built for that if they have to be. Valdosta State, maybe not so much. And I think that shows here, I'm sure... If they could, they'd probably change the weather of this one. But, again, great teams find a way when they have to. The receivers certainly did not have much of a day. uh, But there were a lot of great uh, contributions defensively. Andre Jefferson maybe being one of the most notable ones. Four tackles for loss. Had a big-time sack in this one. And he's a guy that uh, set a couple records as as it concerns Lenore Ryan here. He's been on a lot of people's radar in the national scene. But not just him. That entire defense from Lenore Ryan, I think, stepped up and made a big-time game out of this they will go to Arkansas to play Harding and now that becomes a really interesting matchup because you talk about the physicality of Lenore Ryan you know Harding's that physical so we could have a very similar game to a Grand Valley State Harding where it's a low scoring ground and pound or does Lenore Ryan try to go back to some more explosive plays down the seam hopefully with a little better weather here but as we get closer or farther and farther into the playoffs excuse me we're not going to have much uh, much great weather left so We'll see about those. We're going to try and do some type of show before the games on Saturday where we'll do our game picks and and such again. But just a great week of football. There were some fantastic games, and it's only going to get better. we got semifinals and the national championship, and that's it, man. That's going to be – this offseason is going to be something. I've been such in a groove of, of covering all this stuff. But 